In this episode of Art of Flight, we'll be talking about the steps required to recover from tail rotor loss. For my demonstration aircraft, I'll be using a Black Hawk, though the steps are the same for any Hilo and Arma. First, a quick word about the tail rotor. As a Hilo's rotors spin, they generate torque that must be counteracted. Most helicopters use a small tail rotor for this purpose, though some like the Chinook, Osprey, and Black Shark use tandem or coaxial rotors to cancel out the torque. When a tail rotor is disabled or destroyed, the main rotor's torque becomes unchecked, causing a rapid rotation to develop when operating at lower speeds. The first indication you may have that you've lost your tail rotor is the sudden presence of rotation that does not respond to rudder input. A quick check of your instruments can confirm this. You'll find them in the upper left. Look for the one with an ATRQ label. This is the anti-torque rotor indicator, and it'll become shaded yellow if damaged or red if destroyed. There are two factors that come into play when your tail rotor is lost, speed and altitude. Lower altitude and lower speed are dangerous, while faster speeds and higher altitudes tend to be reasonably safe starting conditions. For demonstration purposes, we'll start at medium altitude and stationary speed. As soon as the spin begins, press and hold your thrust up key. Altitude is very important as it moves you above anything that might cause a collision. As soon as you're able, level the aircraft out. Depending on your experience, you may want to check your instruments at this point to confirm tail rotor damage and determine the severity of it. The next step is wrangling the helo into a state of control. Forward flight at moderate to high airspeed reduces the influence of the tail rotor, which you'll likely have noticed before when trying to yaw during faster forward flight. The same dynamic can be used to regain control of your helo when the tail rotor is damaged or gone. I call this technique rocking out. The premise is that while spinning, you nose the aircraft down, Allow it to rotate fully until the nose is down again, nose it down some more, and repeat this until you recover into forward flight. You're rocking the aircraft towards a consistent direction as you spin, and after a few rotations, you'll end up in one of three states. Two of them are bad, while the other is what you want. This is where having altitude is important, as it allows you to make additional adjustments from the two bad states. The bad states are as follows. The first is ending up in rearward flight, and obviously you don't want this. If you end up flying backwards, one possible and reasonably easy recovery option is to try to increase rearward velocity. Eventually you'll see the helo flip 180 degrees and move into the typical recovery state. The second and more likely state is that of sideways flight. One very important thing to note here is that sideways flight is quite stable. While moving sideways, your collective will control your altitude, while rolling left or right will increase or decrease your speed, depending on which direction you're moving. This can be useful if you need to hastily leave a dangerous area before attempting a full recovery. The best way to recover from sideways flight is to roll opposite of the direction of travel and then pitch down sharply. This will quickly put you back into a spin. From here, simply attempt the rock out maneuver again. Once you've rocked your way into forward flight, start looking for a landing site. I recommend the curving approach towards the landing site curved in the direction of your prior spin, as this helps to control the torque for as long as possible. The most dangerous part is as you come in and slow for a landing. You'll probably want to roll in the direction of spin slightly for stability in the last moments as the rotors begin to torque you in the spinning state again. Keep in mind that a soft landing is somewhat optional here. Landing hard enough to hurt the engines is fine, as you won't be taking off again anyway. Your primary concern is to land safely enough that the crew survives, not so much that the healer remains serviceable. Note that if you end up at low altitude in a hard spin, such as in the final stage of landing, Settling straight down immediately is your best bet if the area is clear. If not, gain altitude and try again. Don't try to force a bad situation. To close and reiterate, the steps for recovering from tail rotor loss are as follows. Gain altitude. Level out. Rock your way into forward flight. Find a safe LZ. Curve into a landing, rolling in the direction of spin to counter torque before touchdown. As with anything, these steps require practice to master. If you haven't already done so, check out my Little Bird practice mission, as it gives you ways to practice tail rotor loss, auto rotations, and various LZs of different difficulty levels. You can find a link in the video description. Finally, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these styles of instructional videos, let me know through the comments. Also, if you have a request for a future one, same story, let me know. Until next time, take care.